Chapter 11, Conflict, A Spirit Gift Conflict grows out of challenges that are presented by spirit. It is a gift meant to help us move forward. It is through conflict that we gain knowledge of ourselves and learn new situations for using our own gifts. Conflict is a wake-up call sent by spirit to remind us of the purpose we are here to fulfill. In an indigenous context, it is seen as a blessing. It should not be nurtured. It should be listened to. And proper steps should be taken to address the spirit behind the conflict. Two humans together are always prone and vulnerable to some form of conflict or other. Without conflict, everything is going to look pretty boring. But dwelling in conflict will make everything pretty sour. So there is a need for a constant balancing, and the ingredient for that balancing is ritual. Ritual acknowledges that the relationship of two people is an energy higher than the two of them simply added together. It is something so big that their intellect and their own dexterity cannot handle crises that arise without the intervention of something ritualistically grounding. When conflict shows up, we may think that the best way to deal with it is to adopt an antagonistic stance toward the other person. But actually, it is best to come together and tell spirit, we've heard the words that you sent to us. We may not know what to make of them. They are very hard very painful for us to deal with, but we understand that it is through this ritual that we will find our gifts and our wisdom. Next time, if you can, make it a little less hard. It will be really helpful because this one took a huge toll on our relationship, but we are listening and we are willing to get beyond our resistance. Conflict usually comes when things start to stagnate. When our ego and our controlling self start to take over our relationship. Conflict is a notice that spiritual energy is being stopped and needs to move. In the village, people are encouraged to deal with conflict instead of running away from it. If they are not able to deal with it, it must be open to the community. Let's say, for instance, that something is really bothering a woman in the village, but she is unable to speak to her husband about it. She can let her women's circle know, this is what's aching me. And the women might speak to her husband. If he doesn't respond, all the family members, both the woman's and the man's, will be called together. If no solution is found, then the whole village will be alerted. By then, you know that it's really late. Things have gotten pretty bad. It's no longer a couple problem. It's a village problem. The couple needs to stand back and let the village deal with it. This process, with the whole community trying to help, makes it impossible for the husband to come back with serious anger at his wife for telling everyone that things aren't working. And reaching out to a larger community for a solution makes it impossible for the problem to continue. I must point out here that there is a difference between making a relationship problem public in order to find a solution for it and making it public without wanting any kind of help. Sometimes we become accustomed to our problems and want to nourish them and not let them go. We give them room to grow, and we do not want them to get out of our life. They become a burden to those who hear about them, not knowing how to respond. This is a modern way of getting attention. Sometimes, the best medicine for people seeking this kind of attention is to not give them any energy. Our fear of being exposed in a culture where everybody else is wearing a mask can be a major obstacle to our reaching out for help. 
This is why it is so crucial to have a trusted circle of people who can give you that sense of belonging and of community. There are many ways of communicating problems to those who can help us. Some people, for instance, are very gifted in their ability to communicate through dreams and can use it as a way to connect with others. People who know us and care about us usually have an open channel for us at all times. If we are clear in our message, however we send it, they can send us the kind of help we are looking for. In Dagara culture, water is a key element in conflict resolution because of its reconciling, unifying, and peaceful qualities. In any ritual pertaining to peacemaking or reconciliation, a lot of water is required in order for people to be brought back to a still place, to a place of alignment and serenity. A radical conflict ritual might involve complete submersion into very cold water after an intense emotional release. In a maintenance type of ritual, one can simply use a splash of water or spend time near water. When a couple in the village has been in serious crisis, they need a radical community ritual to separate them from the problem and bring them back together. First, the people in the village create a sacred space near a body of water. Then, they state the purpose of the ritual in an invocation of spirit, making their intention clear. They explain in detail how the couple has been experiencing a problem and the kinds of things they would like to see happen in the ritual. They ask spirit to come be the driver, to bring some clarity, and to open their hearts so they can listen. They ask for groundedness in order for the conflict to be dissolved and transformed into something good. The couple is then asked to share in their own words how they have been affected by the message Spirit has sent them through their crisis. The source of their crisis is then released into a fire. One at a time, each partner will then step into the water and be submerged by people of the same gender. While all of this is taking place, other people are singing and dancing on the shore to stir up energy thus preventing stagnating energy from coming in. As the couple comes out of the water, everybody welcomes them back into the community. The ritual ends with a thanking of spirit for the good that came out of the ritual. Another ritual of conflict resolution involves the ash circle. It is performed on behalf of a couple or for anyone in the village who is in conflict with others. It is useful and getting to the heart of village problems and eliminating the possibility of denial. If you are used to keeping your problems private, you will find this ritual extremely uncomfortable. It leaves nowhere to hide. First, the community prepares a sacred space with a circle of ash at its center. The ancestors and spirits are called upon. Then, the person who asks for the ritual steps into the ash circle and calls in the person with whom he or she has something to resolve. They sit face to face and bow to each other before speaking. Then they speak about their conflicts and feelings without blaming each other. People sitting outside of the circle have the duty to speak also. If they can help bring clarity and truth without taking sides or trying to divide the couple. As they hear something they need to respond to, they may enter the circle and give voice to their thoughts. Once they have done so, they must remain there until the end of the ritual. At the end, there may be 10 or more people in the circle. This ritual helps bring two people closer together by getting to the bottom of their problem without letting their emotions and suffering interfere with the process. I say this because people in the West have a tendency to bring the courthouse to this ash circle. 
But it is not about assigning guilt or showing one's ability to cross-examine. It is not about winning, nor is it about talking nonsense. It requires us to speak through our heart. The logic of the mind is an obstacle to its success. In the village, it is quickly called off if the people in the middle are not willing to speak the truth. However difficult this ritual might become, people will stay with it until clarity is brought to the group. Then water is offered to everybody to bring a general peace. Everybody bows at the end to acknowledge one another and to mark a closing. They say that trouble becomes scared when voiced. When you talk about problems, these problems start to hate you. And usually, we are safe if a problem hates us. This is one reason why, in the indigenous context, people don't mind verbalizing what is troubling them. They know that even if people don't know how to fix it right away, the simple fact that a problem has been wrapped in words can scare it away. Even if in the West, We don't have communities of the type that exist in the indigenous world. We still have circles of friends, people whom we trust, people who will respond to our call for help. So instead of calling them next weekend for a barbecue, we can call them to sit in a ritual space with us. That might mean that we spend an afternoon with them getting the material ready and making a ritual space. Then we can start calling in spirit explaining the problem we are trying to solve. Even those who are new to ritual, if they have been involved in the preparation of the ritual space, will discover that they have become firmly established in a ritual state. We think we give a lot of time to working out relationship problems, but maybe it's a wrong time given. We need to rethink the manner in which we invest time dealing with our problems. Perhaps it is the mind's manipulative tendency that makes us believe that when there's a problem, if we can't figure out the solution, it's because we're not imaginative enough, we don't think enough, or worse, we are worthless. But maybe it is because we don't feel enough. If we allow the heart to approach the problems that we experience, the heart will lead us to places that are not logical, that are more effective in handling the problem. One of the heart's illogical paths is to create a ritual space and to start shouting, hey, I'm in trouble. So we need to allow ourselves to let go, to release our problem from the grip of our mind. Only after doing so can we see things from a different perspective, from a perspective that gives strength. Otherwise, We keep shrinking, becoming smaller, while the problem becomes bigger. When problems arise, we tend to forget about the strong foundation we have in our relationship. It is helpful to go back to the time when you and your partner came together, when spirit brought you together. Remember where and when you felt the strongest, the closest, and the most intimate. When you are at the lowest point of your relationship, you can have that as a frame of reference. See the language of the current problem from that angle and you will find a way to take the relationship forward. People come together because there is a strong moment that binds them and that strong moment must be held so that in the midst of crisis, it can be one's principal ally. The problem is That when people are in crisis, they forget that they were once strong because they are overwhelmed. But more often than not, the crisis is like a little rat who's running around everywhere looking like a huge giant. If you have a good flashlight and you lock onto it, you realize that it's just a tiny little thing. You will be surprised what the blessings of a community, of a circle of friends, can do for you at the end of any crisis. 